Joining us now, a guy that's won one of these things, a Hall of Famer, both the college and the pro level. He's a coach. He's a broadcaster. He I don't, I don't know if there's any hat that the great Rod Woodson has not worn, and a former colleague at NFL Network as well. How are you, Rod Woodson? What's going on there? Thanks for having me on. There is no way this is a bad game, right? No. I mean, if it's if I was a paying customer in going to the Super Bowl, this is the one I would want to go to. Uh, I think it's going to be a close game. I think you can make an argument for both teams to win. And that's why when you make that type of argument and then it always comes out, okay, if this this happens, this happens, they're going to win. If this, 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 and this happens, they're going to win. That's the type of game you want to watch. What has to happen for the Bucks to win? I know that sounds absurd because they have Tom Brady, right? But the, the idea that the Chiefs can explode at any moment, I think, probably hangs over all four quarters. So, Rod, as a defensive guy, what do they have to do to make sure that doesn't happen? Well, you know, you know, go back to the last, the first game that they had in, in the November they really didn't have a running game. And I think, you know, the way Leonard Fournette was, is running the ball now as of late and Jones is running the ball, if they can run the ball and still play action pass, use Gronk, use those big receivers in Godwin and Evans, and even the tight end, uh, the other tight end and Bray, you have some players. And, you know, if they can do that, consistently run the football that's going to slow them down that's going to keep Mahomes and that explosive offense on the sideline you can't score when you're on the sideline and at the end I think Todd Bowles defense he has to find a way where he's been doing a really good job he did a really good job so far in the postseason to mixing it up when he was going to make pressure uh, when he was going to play some man when he's going to play a little soft zone and that secondary played pretty good football the first game and I wouldn't be surprised they do it again. But if they can play their best game, running the football, Todd Bowles getting after Mahomes, not playing a lot of man-to-man because that's one thing that you kind of want to stay away from when you play against Mahomes and that speed that they have on that offense. And they can get that pressure with the front four of the Bucks defense, then they have a great opportunity. And Tom Brady has a great opportunity of getting his seventh Super Bowl ring. Talking to the great Rod Woodson, Hall of Famer on the field and a great coach as well when he wore that hat. Rod, you mentioned get to Mahomes with four. Look, the numbers tell you 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 don't blitz him. He kills you every time. But your instinct, I would have to think as a defender, is go after the guy, right? So how do you resist the urge to find ways to heat him up? Well, let's just go back to the one game they lost this year. All right. When you go back and watch that game, and the the Raiders beat them in the first quarter and a half, the Raiders played a lot of man to man, and they were getting tore up. They were getting you know, just bombed. And you know, at, at halftime, they did a tremendous job, and they they changed the game plan. They went to more zone, and they were getting pressure with their front four, doing some games up front. And Cosby did a great job on the edges on a, on his own of getting pressure to the back behind there and, and getting pressure on Mahomes, and they won that game. And to me, when you play against them, because it's one thing that you don't want to do with them when you have Tyreek Hill, when you have a hard man. We and you just said a little while ago that Robinson's been cleared to play. We haven't even talked about Sammy, you know. So you have so many, and then we didn't talk about the best tight end in the National Football League and Travis Kelsey, when they have those type of weapons, you don't want to play a lot of man-to-man because they can take those shots down the field. If you can keep everything in front of you, if you can do that, that that just bodes well for your football team to win those type of games. If you can do all those things, which is kind of easier said than done with the Chiefs, (laughs) talking to the Hall of Famer Rod Woodson, it's it's just absurd, right? Like, we did this on NFL Network all year and listen we're feeding the beast and it's a long season and you're trying to keep it interesting every week but you know we had that stretch in the second half of the season man are we concerned that the chiefs are playing all these close games they're playing one possession games they're susceptible aren't they and then you step back and you go like you just said well the one game they lost yeah if you throw out week 17 and chad henney with Patrick Mahomes at quarterback, including the postseason, Rob, they've won 25 of 26. Right. Like, 
I mean, it, it's a juggernaut because he I finds mean, a way. Know, yeah, and the one thing that you, you know, unfortunate for Eric Benemy of not getting a job, that's another topic we can ever get to. But, you know, keeping their coaching staff intact and all their players intact, I mean, it just, you know, they, they just kept everything together. And that system that they have, that Andy Reid has just kind of developed a culture to let his players be themselves inside of their systems. And anytime you're yourself in, inside of a system, you just, you're more comfortable. When you're more comfortable, you normally work at a higher rate. And that's the same thing as athletes. And you, know, you give a lot of credit to, to Andy Reid, uh, to Eric Bieniemy, uh, for and, and the hires up to be for the Kansas City Chiefs of drafting the Tyreek Hills. Because you know Tyreek Ty Hill had that that red flag of you know it, should he be drafted? Where should he be drafted? But Andy Reid has taken those guys on. He's given them a lot of love, and they've given him uh, one Super Bowl already. And with the possibility of having two. All right, you mentioned Eric Bandy. Let's talk about it. Why do you think it hasn't happened? You know, that's a that's a great question. Um, you know, it's it's a little unfortunate. Um, it is what it is. You can't tell uh, an owner who to hire. That's one thing you can't do. You can't tell somebody who owns a business that they have to hire a certain person. And, you know, unfortunately enough, if you look at this, the, you know, the process of where, um, you know, especially EB uh, not having the opportunity because they're so good. So he doesn't really get to, I mean, even though he does from virtual, he can't fly in on the week off. Um, but, you know, not having that opportunity to have his own team is, it's kind of a, it is sad um, to say. It's sad to see how we, the NFL has gone about, hiring um, head coaches. Um, I think they hire who they're comfortable with and who they maybe feel that, you know, can, can go, go, go with all their check marks in their, whatever their, their list is with what they want to see as a head coach, but how, how Eric Bieniemy hasn't, even though he has a lot of opportunities to have interviews, um, he had all those interviews and still hasn't landed the job. It's just unfortunate for him, and, and like he said at the press conference earlier in the week, that he's not the poster boy for coaches not getting a job. He doesn't want to be that guy. And, you know, so you give him credit for that. But, you know, and luckily for them, they haven't lost him, and they still have their whole coaching staff. <laughs> and, you know, it's going to be tough for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to go, to go against that offensive staff. Yeah, and as he said, he's not the poster boy for this. Unfortunately, it does keep coming up. And for those who want to say, and we're talking to Rod Woodson here, well, he's not really calling plays. A, a that's not always true. I mean, he, he does call some. And, and B, it didn't prevent Matt Nagy from getting the Bears job as an Andy Reid assistant. It didn't prevent Doug Peterson from getting the Eagles job as an Andy Reid assistant. So the idea that that should be the determining factor to me is is just kind of nuts. Um, I'm looking at your list of career picks, Rod. Correct me if I'm wrong. You never got Tom Brady. I have the only Patriots quarterback you got was someone named Tom Hodson, who I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. If, I think I played against Tom once or tw- twice, maybe. I don't remember. Um, yeah, I mean, Tom was a baby. Right. You know, when he, when, you know, when, when I was in the league and, you know, I left in 04 um, or 03, excuse me, after 03 season, but I never had the opportunity to play. And you love to play against the best. You know, I played against up to probably 13 Hall of Famers, and I'm including Peyton in that because he's going to be a Hall of Famer. But, you know, so it's it's always good to play against guys like that. I, I don't, but yeah, I don't remember ever getting Tom. Um, Never having that opportunity to do that. I but, asked, you know, Thomas, how do you, how do you get to ten Super Bowls? I, I, I don't do know. Do that? We were talking about that earlier, and here, Rod, here's some perspective. Babe Ruth got to ten World Series, far different era, <laughs> and he won right. seven. 
I mean, this w w in the modern world to get to 10 championships and now potentially win seven out of 10 is, is I don't know. I mean, can you imagine kids, kids, you know, they want to play in the national football league and that's a great goal to have. And then Tom Brady, like this raises the bar right, to say, yeah, you can play in the NFL if you want to, but you know, can you get to 10 Super Bowls? Like the only person that can maybe get to that point is the guy that he's playing against Patrick Mahomes. And you got to, and then he has to be on a good team for a long period of time for, you know, almost 20 years to get to that point. So it's just, it is so you know, hard. What Tom has done in his career, going from one team to the next and, and to get that team to the Super Bowl in his first year is an amazing feat. Uh, you really you know this, and I hope the fans know this, but just to get to one is so hard. To get to oh, ten yeah. and then to win seven is just, it is mind-blowing. Before we let you go, Rod, and I appreciate the time here, um, I, I think, I used to have a rule doing radio all the time, you're not allowed to ask who's going to win until Friday, so I apologize. It is now Friday, and you got stuck <laughs> with this one. Uh, who do you like? Do I dare ask? No, you know, I can make an argument for both. And I said at the very beginning of the show, right, when we first started talking, I think I can make an argument for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers of winning, the Kansas City Chiefs to win the game. But I'm going to stick with the Chiefs because it just it's hard for me to see them not having a stretch in the game where they don't score two, two, touchdown, two possessions having two touchdowns, mm -hmm. three possessions in a row having three touchdowns. And if the Bucks and – you know, and I love Todd Bowles, but if the Bucks start playing a lot of man to man, then I'm somehow Tyreek Hill is going to find. You know, I, I think Jamal Dean, and I, and I think he's played he's played well, but I think you know he's they're going to find him, and because I really love Carlton Davis, but I think they'll find Dean and try to take some deep shots. Um, so um, I'm I'm sticking with Kansas City. I think they'll just I just can't see them the Bucks just outscoring them even if it's a you know a shootout I just can't see him ha it happening I think Mahomes gets his second I think Andy Reid gets his second and they go back to back I'm with you Rod it is great to have you on Hall of Famer at the College Football Hall of Fame the Pro Football Hall of Fame and a Super Bowl champion of the man who is on the list of the top 100 to ever put on a uniform Rod have a great weekend let's talk again soon all right, Andrew, take care. You got it, man. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.